Good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Okay. Good morning. If you are joining me now and you see the red live box up in your left hand corner, that means you are catching me live. It is 10 a.m. I am on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, so it's 10 a.m. here. Uh, it is a sunny, beautiful, summer-like day here. Uh, we are expecting, I guess, some thunderstorms later today, so um, but I'm going to enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, that's my toaster oven. So, um, super excited. It's a Friday. I missed you all last week. I kept trying and trying and trying every day. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go live tomorrow. I'm going to go live tomorrow. And it just didn't work out. Um, I was really busy last week prepping for Memorial Day. So we just had the unofficial uh, start of summer. So um, I was super excited. Um, just trying to get ready. We've been doing some mulch around the house here. It was it was strange here in PA because we were like cold and miserable and it just was rainy and every day was cloudy. And then all of a sudden last week it was just like a switch was flipped and it was summer. So we were just rushing. We were trying to matter of fact we're still going to be doing some mulch around here at the house today. Um, so we are you know, just busy here, and I was really busy last week. Um, we went camping for the weekend, the holiday weekend, and um, we go with, with family and that. So we was out, we took the camper out, and I was just getting ready all week, and um, so it was busy. So I couldn't get to you last week. But, um, you know, I hope everybody had a good weekend, had a great week last week, but here we are today. Um, yes. This is a garden flag, and this was the one that I just did with the video the other day. Um, so let me go ahead and show you. Ooh, let me get it off my wall. Okay. And I am working with a wholesaler to get these. So I am um, working to get these in, okay? And I'm going to have these available to all of you. These are awesome. As you can see, you can do a banner in your house, or if you want, you can hang it on your front door and you can change your garden flags out. So be looking for these um, in the next week. I'm gonna have these in my shop, okay? So these are gonna be awesome. They are metal, they are not plastic, they are not garbage. Um, these are probably gonna be um, you know, I don't know the price on these exactly yet. I ordered, this was my sample one, and I have a bunch coming in. I just haven't worked out the price yet, but these are so nice. These are metal, um, and they're very easy. They just come off right here. The end unscrews. Okay, let me show you this. Okay, so these are going to be, I'm going to be stocking these. This comes off. You just put your flag on it, and look at this, and this is metal. So I had ordered some before, um, and I didn't like them because they were plastic, and I just didn't like the quality of them. They, uh, matter of fact, when I was screwing one together, um, the threads were stripped, and they were broke, and they were plastic, so I didn't like them. So I searched for a, um, a company that I could go ahead and use, and this is what I got. But look at them. They're beautiful. How awesome is that? Okay. So be watching for these. Um, they were scheduled to arrive yesterday. Oh, am I starting to glitch? I'm starting to glitch. Okay. Um, they were scheduled to arrive yesterday, and then I got a delayed shipping on them. So, um, am I glitching, guys? I can see it on my end. I look like I'm glitching. Looks like my video is not doing well. I might need to go to, our internet here is, it's so bad. And I don't know why, I live right in the city. Okay, hold 
Okay, sorry I lost you. Okay, now it froze. Yeah, my, my internet was getting really bad here. Okay, so let's see if this is better. Okay, so these are the new garden flag hangers that I am going to be offering in my shop. Okay, so um, they were scheduled to arrive yesterday and then I got a notice that said that they were delayed. So I'm not sure if they're gonna be here today, when they come, but these are beautiful. Um, and then I'll give you more details on them when they do come, but look how nice they are. You can hang the flags then, you can do flags and put them in your house, in your decor. You can do them on your doors, if you wanna put it on a door. Um, I don't have a price on this yet. Um, I, you know, when it comes in, um, I'll work that out. I just haven't got that far yet with them. I do sell this design. Um, so I did a video yesterday to show you the differences in um, the flags when you, you, you know, you print your flags. This is the linen, double-sided linen flag that I have, the faux burlap. It's in my shop. It's a 12 by 18. Um, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so it's like my placemats and the runners and the um, pillows that I offer. Okay, and this is, boy, my internet is so bad here. This is, um, there you go. So this is it done. This is the design. The, this is the hauling watermelons. And it is on the, um, the linen one, so sorry, I'm trying to watch my internet and it's glitching. So this one's done on the linen, the hauling watermelons. And then here is the one done on the, the white flags. And look at the difference in them. This is the video that I showed yesterday on printing. So when you're printing the, the vibrancy and you know, it turns out different. Your flag will look different with the whatever flag you choose. Why be getting in more of the double-sided ones? I'm waiting for those. I'm also waiting for the canvas-like one ones also to come. Um, I placed an order. I'm just waiting for those to come. So, yes, I'll be getting more of... Right now, I do have currently... This one is a double-sided one. The pro um, burlap linen one. This is double-sided. My um, canvas ones, the double-sided ones, they're going to be coming. I'm just waiting for them to get here as well. I would like to put the flag in the yard for the children. Could I design some flags that are preschool-centered? I can. Um, I just, I have a list I've been working down. Uh, my list is long. <coughs> and then <clears throat> I just, you know, I'll come up with some ideas and I'll be thinking, I'll add it to that list. So I kind of try to stay on track with my list. So let me put that down there. That don't mean that I won't get to it because sometimes I'll just skip through my list and I'll go with um, whatever I'm feeling for the day. Sometimes at nighttime I'll sit down and be like, okay, next on the list is this that I really wanted to work on and then I don't. Um, you know, so I just kind of have a lot of, I keep a list of a lot of things that I just want to, kind of do and um, I go down that list okay am I glitching because on my end my video quality is horrible and I don't know what's going on so I don't want to be glitching for you guys so let me know am I glitching like I'm like I'm freezing on this end a lot I don't want to be I'm fine okay so then it just it must just be my end like I'm okay good okay so then I'm not gonna worry about it if I do happen to start glitching or freezing please let me know um, because my end over here is horrible okay so Father's Day is coming up and um, to me Father's Day is one of the hardest times for me to find gifts for my husband. Um, when my dad was alive, I had a hard time just coming up with things. I don't know why it is. I think they're a little bit more, they say we're complicated, 
Um, I think men are more complicated to buy for, to find items for, you know, because they're not into flowers. They're not just everyday simple items they're not into, where we will ooh and ah over a small little gift because it's pretty. Guys aren't like that, <laughs> you know. I think they are so difficult to buy for. I don't care if it's for a birthday, Christmas, um, you know, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. They are super hard to buy for. So, um, coming up with items, I can come up with a million items for moms. But when I'm looking for an item for my husband, for dads, oh, I struggle. I struggle with that. I even struggle with designing, um, you know, manly things because they're hard to just design for. Um, and that's my struggle. Even when I'm doing little boy items um, for the holiday, or I mean, just even like for baby items and things like that for the boys, I have a little bit harder of a time for, oh, let me let my husband in, sorry. Okay, sorry. My husband was here, sorry. I had to let him in. Um, Starts when they turn around eight or nine years old, yes. So I even have a little bit of a hard time designing, coming up with like boy, baby boy items. And I don't know why that is. Um, are my grandchildren, my grandsons outnumber my girls. We have four grandsons and three granddaughters. And I still have a very hard time coming up with boy items. So I don't know, that's just my downfall with um, designing and things like that. So when now when it comes to Father's Day, huh, it's even worse. So, um, but I'm gonna try to give you some ideas, um, some things that maybe the guys, you know, are into, you know, some things like that. So hopefully this even helped me with some things um, because I have son-in-laws that I'm gonna give, you know, some gifts to as well. So, um, one of the items that I came up with today, I have not done. So, the items that I'm doing today are new to even me. So, we're going to be pressing these live, and we're going to see how it goes. <coughs> okay, I know my husband brought me a coffee, an iced coffee, so I am going to grab that. So, let me be right back before we start. Okay, now I might be ready. He, he was running late and he was supposed to have this here to me beforehand. Okay, yay. I got my iced coffee. Okay, so um, the items that I'm going to be doing new today, um, they're new to me as well. I have not pressed any of them. I have not tried them. So we're going to see how this goes. And you are going to find out. They, they seem like they're really good quality. So that's why I kind of just was like, let's go ahead with this. Um, so we are going to, um, we're going to work with those. So today I am going to do, because every man out there thinks they are the grill master. Um, including mine, who... I'm not going to say this out loud. He cannot grill at all. <laughs> He's horrible on the grill. Um, and he knows that. So, but every guy thinks that they are the grill master. You put them around some other guys at the grill, and they think they're the best. So, I don't know. It just seems like, not mine. 
Um, well, then you got lucky because my husband will only let me know that he's not really good on the grill. But if you put him around five of his friends, guy friends, he's the best griller out there. Um, but in all retrospect, to be honest with you, my husband will get put the stuff on the grill and they're usually playing cornhole and he will forget he's cooking. So I am, when I know that he's grilling, I, and we have friends over, I am monitoring, so to say, his grilling because um, he will burn everything and we will be eating shoe leather, as I always tell him. That's what he cooks. He cooks on the grill shoe leather. So um, we are going to do these aprons, okay? Um, so I figured that's, uh, that was one of the items that I came up with. We're going to do, we're going to do an apron and these aprons really seemed like they had, they were good quality. Um, so I kind of was like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I know when my husband's out, I asked him, I said, honey, would you wear an apron? And he said, well, I probably wouldn't, but if you put it out or gave it to me to put on when I was grilling, that could save my polos because he always has like grease all over them and stuff like that. So I said, well, we're going to make you an apron. So that is what we're doing today. Okay. And uh, let's see. So we're going to really deck this apron out for the guys. Okay. I took and I pre-pressed one just to go ahead. Now, as you've seen, when they come to you, um, I am going to have these in my shop, okay? So these are going to be available in my shop. They're $10 each, okay? And they're a really nice size, and they are a good quality, um, not super thick, but not super thin linen. So, and this, these are 100% uh, polyester. So I really like them because the quality seems really good. And even if my husband doesn't use it, I guarantee you, this is one of those, I'm going to give it to you, and if you don't use it, the wife's going to use it. I will use this for sure. Um, you know, so this is, what, this is what I came up with with this. They are going to come bagged, as you've seen, so they're all going to come pre-packaged. So you can go ahead, if you do make these and you want to offer them, you can put them back in the bag if you want, and um, they'll be packaged up nicely. If not, you can package them nicely. I like those in there so fast, especially for Father's Day. Yeah, so um, these are it. Okay. You made them for your sons with vinyl, and they love them. My husband's a little weird with things, like, just, I will say this. My husband, most guys are not worried about clothing. And I literally say my husband shops for clothes more than I do. He is a clothing guy. Um, and he's very particular with his clothing. Like, he, he likes to dress really nice all the time. I'm like, honey... Do you do realize we're going to an outdoor picnic? You could put a t-shirt on. But he'll have like polo and nice shirt, shorts. <laughs> I'll be like, okay. So it makes it difficult on me because then I feel like I'm underdressed everywhere I go. So, you know, I'm always like, okay, well, I have to overkill this because my husband's showing up looking like he's ready for church. Um, but that's just his style. It always has been. So he's a little funny with clothing and, you know, putting this on over his clothing. That's probably where it comes in at. But, so if we do these, um, this is going to be pressed at 400 degrees, and these are 60 seconds, okay? So I did a pre-press on them because when it came out of the package, they're a little wrinkled. And, you know, I always like to have a really nice, um, wrinkle-free surface to put things on. So I just went and I pre-pressed it. And really, I just pre-pressed the area, and then I was like, well, let me just finish pressing this out on my heat, um, my heat press. So that's what I did. It is the preacher in him. He's got to dress. He still preaches in a suit. Every Sunday, my husband's in a suit. So it is the preacher in him. For those of you that don't know, my husband is a pastor, 
and we do have a church. So I'm the pastor's wife, obviously. Um, but he, you know, he's a very sharp dresser, very, um, real nice dresser, very particular about his clothing. So, so anyways, I pre-pressed this and then I just went and just pressed it off. Sorry, I have a delay here. So if you see why I'm constantly seeming like I'm stopping and breaking up and things like that, I'm trying to read and keep up with you guys on this end and it's, it's weird. So it's making for my video to be weird. Okay, so um, I came up with a little design last night, and I am going to put it in my Etsy shop for you. So I will offer it up for sale. I just haven't got a chance to get to it. And, um, okay, if you hear somebody in the background, that's my husband in the background. My husband's a loud talker. Like, I always say, honey, you're on a cell phone, not a megaphone, babe. But he's one of those ones where you will hear him in the store like four hours over and you're like, who's talking on their cell phone? That's probably my husband. Just so you know. Okay, so let me get my tape. Jeez, I have a ton of things happening here, guys. Sorry. My dog wants out. My husband's outside. He's talking. Can't find my tape. Here's my tape. I had it yesterday. Sorry. I'm just a mess this morning. My video's messing up. Okay. Is everybody still seeing the video okay? Because I'm having a super hard time over here um, trying to see you in the comments, seeing if you are... Okay. I just want to make sure because it is really, really bad on my end over here. Okay. So then I'm just going to go ahead and continue on. I'm probably, if you get a delayed reaction on with me um, answering your questions, it's probably because the video is, it's really bad over here. It's freezing. So I'm not seeing a lot of things. Okay. I'm just going to go on then um, and then I'll continue. Okay, so here is the design that I did last night. And as you see, this is going to be facing you, um, but this is really mirror imaged, but the camera shows backwards, okay? So um, this design is going to let you be able to personalize this. I put dad in there, but it's going to be, that's going to be blank and you're going to be able to personalize that, okay? Okay. So here's the design. The design um, I did, I decided to go with like a, this will be ready for you to go. This is going to be, I sized it to be like 10 inches by, I think it's 13. Love the flames. Yeah, isn't that cute? So um, you'll be able to personalize this for your customers as well. Or, you know, they could put a name here, um, you know, nickname there. I just did dad just for general purposes for myself. But like I said, this design will go into my Etsy shop. I'll list it as soon as we're done here. And you're going to be able to um, personalize that, okay? So this is a great item because this can be personalized for the guys. And I am just going to tape this down. Now, I was wondering and deciding if I should spray it and tape it because I think this is going to have a lot of movement. But I'm going to try just the tape. But I'm going to really tape this one down. And I'm, but, sorry, I'm off camera, but I am on doing this on my table. Because I don't really have much room over. So I'm going to tape this down as best as I can. And I'm going to use a lot of tape on this one. Just because I think it's going to move a little, shift a little because it's so big. And I probably, I will tell you, I considered doing this. I did consider doing this with my Easy Press. And I do think that this would be a good item that you could absolutely use that Cricut Easy Press on if you have that. It might even be, you know, a little bit easier because you're not having to wait for your 
Heat press to heat up because if you know the Cricut Easy Press, it heats very quickly. All right. So um, definitely, I am absolutely going to say that you could do your you could use your Cricut Easy Press for this. You need six aprons. Okay. Well, they're gonna. I am gonna put these in my shop. Okay. Um, so here we go. I have it all taped down. Okay. And all I did was leave a little bit at the top. Tried to center it as best as I could. The are these big? Yes, these are fairly big. Um, when I'm done here and I press it, I'll show you it. Okay. These are fairly big aprons. Um, the tails are fairly long, so let me see. We'll have to see how that goes. I'll try this on and, and give you an estimate on how long it could be. I'll even measure it for you. Don't touch the heat press because the heat press is hot. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there. So I am using my um, Cricut Easy Press pad, my pressing pillow. Okay, so make sure you use that. And this is on a medium pressure. Okay, so make sure you use that. I should have probably showed you that. Um, you know I love my pressing pillow, and I do love the Cricut brand ones because they're a little bit more dense. So um, I, I do recommend them. I, you know, I just love them personally. Um, now, I'm using my 15 by 15 press. And I'm using my bigger pressing pillow on here which is, um, I think it's a 16 by 20. And it, of course it's overhanging the sides, but I needed that whole area to be covered because this is a little bit of a larger, it's covering more of my press. Okay, so um, make sure you use butcher paper underneath, then it'll be your pressing pillow, butcher paper, your apron, and then the butcher paper on top of that. You're so afraid to use the pressing pillow? Oh, girl, let me tell you. You need to use that because there, don't be afraid of it. This thing, those, your, wait, wait till you see your items. They are going to come out so much better with a pressing pillow. It really is the key to um, a lot of the pressing issues that you may have. Okay, this is the part that I was a little bit afraid of. I was going to ghost it a little because I think I'm going to need to spray it. So I'm going to do another one with you. But if you see, I got a little bit of the ghosting on the bottom right there. So I'm going to spray this. So we're going to do another one. The top turned out perfect. Then when it got to the bottom, it did a little bit of ghosting. But look how beautiful. Look how beautiful this subs. So this is the first time I subbed this. And I think this is where the Cricut Easy Press would be maybe a little bit better of a choice because when you, your um, press pops up, it sometimes shifts your image. Um, that's why I'm going to try this one with the, um, with the spray as well, the Pro Spray. And then you won't get that little bit of ghosting there. And that's usually how you get ghosting is, is because your image shifts a little. Does the, oh, the pressing pillow... It will, it will make every bit of your shirts, any fabric items, um, flags, everything. You really need to try the pressing pillow. You're going to fall in love with it. This is where you will not get your pressing. Um, you won't have the problems with the seams and stuff like that. It is a, um, it's a, ghost, it's a game changer. Sorry, I was trying to read. What does ghosting mean? Ghosting is this. Can you see how when the image shifted... It left some, like it moved the image a little. You had some slight movement of it. See how it's got some of the shadowing? That's what ghosting is, okay? And that's usually caused because when you are pressing your images, um, sublimation actually turns into a gas, and um, the gases are still working with the heat. So when that image shifts, the gassing is still working, and then that causes that gas to shift a little and still penetrate your fabrics or your items, and that's what ghosting is. So that's how you get ghosting. Okay. So I'm going to try some spray with it. 
but honestly if you if you really wanted my opinion I probably would probably do these with my Cricut easy press because I think just putting it down and then it would be a little bit um, better and I almost did that with it but I thought I'm gonna try I'm gonna try the um, the press, the heat press itself. But what I'm gonna do is, and here's the pressing pillows. This is my large one. This is the 16 by 20. All right, and that's my pressing pillow, and I'm just using that on here because I need my whole surface covered. The other one that I use most of the time is a 12 by 12, and that's the next size down. Um, it was a little bit too small for this because I was doing uh, like up to a 14 inch. So I decided to use the bigger pillow for that. Okay, let's get a good press on this. Get the wrinkles out. But I think this would absolutely be perfect for the Cricut Easy Press. And that's what I do the baby blankets with. For those of you who have seen the videos with the um, baby blanket, because it causes, um, it helps to not have so much ghosting as well. Because with the, when you have a heat press, when especially a clamshell, when I try to lift it as easy as possible, but it still has a little bit of pop to it. So then what happens is it shifts your paper a little bit. Let me try to loosen the pressure just a little. All right. All right. I think I had, yes, I had two cut just in case. So we're going to try this again. I am going to spray this with the Pro Spray. pillow shapes with my press they are shiny or copper yeah um, you can buy sometimes you can buy them on um, you know a lot of people sell them made and stuff like that with the copper the shiny copper colors and I do have some and I would bought some before um, it's not that they don't work I like the density of these Cricut brand ones they seem to be um, thicker they don't smush down um, they have a better foam inside of them I think so they're kind of I like it a lot better. Okay. Okay, so I sprayed it really well. Now my hands are sticky with my heat spray. And I'll show you the one that I use. Now I am also going to tape this, okay? And I've posted a link to this before. This is the one I use, and you know I'm not a big fan of spray adhesive. Um, I do use it on my koozies with the, um, the little can koozies. I use it on that. And then I'm going to use it on this because it just gives that little bit of extra adhesive that I need. To hopefully it won't shift my image. So let's tape this down really well as well. But honestly, I probably will do these with my Cricut Easy Press. It heats up quicker. And um, I will have less popping with that. So let's cover that. Let's go 60 seconds. And it's about a medium pressure. Now my hand's all sticky. Um, so if you use the adhesive, make sure you spray this over a garbage can because, um, believe me, you'll be sticky. This is a really good one. You can use the Cricut pressing pillows from Amazon. Yes, you can. That's where I got the, actually I had got mine. I think I grabbed one at Michael's. Um, they have them in store, in, in the store. So does Joann's. And then I got my really large one, the 16 by 20, because I use it on my big press. And I use it for all of my flags and all of my fabric items. 
Um, I use I use my pressing pillow a lot. I even use it for my subboards. Um, anything where I have and I need some pressure, it um, it help with pressure, evening out pressure, because that's what it does. And with a clamshell, pressure is a little bit more heavier in the back than it is on the front. So I tend to use my pressing pillow a lot because I can give a little bit heavier of a press and get even pressure. And that's really what you need with any items that you're doing. You need that even pressure. Had a little bit at the very bottom, but not bad. Ouch. And believe me, these are hot. So be very careful when you take them up. These are very hot. Okay. So let me give you some measurements. But look at the colors on these. Look how pretty. These have show the colors very well. So this is a really nice apron. I do love it. Definitely something that I'm going to be offering in my shop. And this will be great for, um, for the guys in your life for marketing it for Father's Day. So like I said, I'm going to list these in my shop. You can go ahead over there and just grab them there. Um, and... Let me see. I'm trying to read. Sorry. Uh, you can get the Cricut pressing pillow. Have a pod holder held in place with big magnets on the top. To hold them a little from popping up. Protects my... Hmm. Well, that might be something. I can't see the rest of it. Sorry. Protects my hands. The top is hot. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't... Maybe that's a little trick that I might need to try. Okay. So we're going to move on to, let me grab this, let's grab this one. Okay, so I figured we could go ahead and we could have this done. Okay, so we could do the top right here. And then I thought, well, let's add something to the bottom. Let's get a little bit more creative. And I was going to add some more flames to the bottom. I thought, why not do the whole apron? Okay, so this is also going to come with that design. I added some flames. Oops, sorry, upside down. And I'm going to put some flames across the bottom of the apron. So let's really just deck this out for Dad. So along the bottom, I'm just going to place some flames, and we're going to do this in sections. Okay, Cricut has pressing pillows on sale now. Okay, well that would be awesome. If you need a pressing pillow, now's the time to get it if they're on sale. I'm going to just take this and I'm going to just, all I did was tape the flames along the bottom. And this is going to be with that file as well. So I kind of made the file as a whole file itself. So if you want to add the flames to the bottom, you can. Okay, now I didn't uh, pro spray this, so let's see. What size are the aprons? I'm short and a lot of uh, a lot of the aprons are long to use for short people. Um, I'll have to get a measurement. Let me get a measurement as soon as I'm done pressing these. Because um, she needs to know the, the size of the strings too. So let's do that. Here, you know what? I have an extra one. The 
apron is three foot. That's including the neck strap, um, how long it hangs. So it's three foot from top to bottom. And I always say you can always take and, you know, fold it a little bit and, and tie it. Because I know my grandmother was short and that's how she always wore her aprons. These get hot. Okay, here's some. Let's get more. We're just going to kick up this apron just a notch here. Give that some flames along the bottom. struggling guys with trying to see you my camera is really messed up over here and I don't know why I'm freezing on this end a lot our internet and our Wi-Fi here is just I live right in the city, and you would think I would be out in some backwoods with uh, my internet service sometimes, and I have no idea why. We've had it fixed so many times. Okay, so let me try to go back here and read some things. Okay. Hopefully I didn't miss much. Um, so we're just kicking this up a notch. We are putting some flames along the bottom. So um, I always say when you're doing something, you know, I see if you go on Etsy, there's a lot of aprons out there. Um, try to do something, you know, I try to go a little bit uh, beyond what somebody else does. Um, you know, you see a lot with just something here. So I figured let's do something along the bottom. Make yours a little bit different than somebody else. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of people doing the same things. Um, but I always say if pop or soda or a bread manufacturer go just head down the bread aisle, you think, well, you know, there's just bread. But look how many different people are making bread. And they're all a little bit different from the other. Even though it's white bread, this white bread over here is skinny white bread. This white bread over here has better taste bread. So, you know, you got to be, we're in a business where, you know, you got a lot of competition, a lot of the same things. People buy a lot of the same designs. Do a little bit different. What font did I use for dad? I used the Times. Times font. So be a little bit different. Make your items a little bit different than somebody else. Um, and that's what I try to do. I try to offer a little bit different from somebody else. So we're gonna kick it up a notch here. We are gonna put these flames on it. Okay, almost done. And I haven't seen, um, these do not bleed through to the back side. So there's no bleed through or anything like that. Yeah, you could see through it, but it's not bleeding. So that's a good thing. So for the font, I used Times. And the New Times Roman is also, sorry, will the 12 by 10 easy press work on the 12 by 18 flags? Um, I know some people have tried it and they've had good success with it. Um, 
I have not. So I have a bigger press and that's what I use. Um, but I have used my 15 by 15 press before for flags before I even decided to get my bigger press. And that was the reason of me getting my bigger press was because you can do it on a 15 by 15 um, heat press. Um, so, but then I was always having to do two passes on it, two different um, presses. So I just decided to go bigger with it. But um, I've not tried it with the Cricut Easy Press, but I know a lot of people do, and they've had success with it. Okay, so look how cute that is. We just added flames. All right, let me see if I can get you a whole. over for us. Sorry. All right. Are you able to see that? Look how cute this is. Okay. So there you go. An apron for dad. And I have, you know, some room back here to tie. For a bigger guy, I'll have to go ahead and check and see how much room there is for this. Yeah, that's cute, isn't it? I love this apron. I actually think I'm going to make one for me. Forget him. <laughs> Forget Dad. Um, I think Bum's going to wear this. Because I always become a mess when I'm out on the grill. Okay, so let me give you a quick measurement on how long. I can find, I got my table and mess over here. The straps in themselves are 18 inches. So there's two 18 inch straps on it. Let me give you a measurement of the middle. So that's an added three feet. And it's, and it's two feet to the straps. So from here to here across the the actual width of the apron is two feet and then additional 18 inches here and 18 inches here so it's going to be five feet basically around okay so if you are looking to for a bigger guy that's about what you have for that okay so I think I am going to make this that says mom because actually I'm the grill master here because my husband burns all the food on the grill. He forgets it's cooking and he gets sidetracked very easily. Okay, so I got one other really quick item for you. I'm gonna wear this. Also, and this is also going into my shop as well. I'm losing everything and so I got these in and I have not pressed these either um, these are bottle openers and these look so nice so I had a choice there's a lot of the regular bottle openers out there but I wanted to go with this one it was a little bit more expensive but it's magnetic and if your husband's like my husband he can't even keep his like track of his glasses his reading glasses we, we're like in this house, we are constantly on the hunt for reading glasses. Like, how do you lose those? You, you're always reading. So I know if I would have just given him a regular bottle opener, he would have lost it. So I love this because it's, ma it's magnetic, okay? Like I said, it was, a, you know, there's a lot out there that aren't, but I wanted to go with a magnetic one. Now these, I even thought, because I looked at it and I was like, that's cute, because that looks like a heart. These would be great to market for weddings as favors um, or bridal showers or anything like that. Give to the best man, whatever. These would be great to, so this would be not only for Father's Day, but this would be great to market for anything like that. But we're going to do Father's Day with these, okay? I have not done these yet either. I'm going to reuse them. And I am also going to see how these just going on with the design be in my Etsy shop. Yes, it will be. The aprons will be in there, and these magnetic holders or uh, magnetic bottle openers will be too. 
If I'm pressing over, no, it doesn't lighten it. Mm -mm. Nope. No. I do sometimes, um, I'm really, I'm one of those ones, a lot of people say they have problems with it, um, taking away some of the maybe coloring from the other thing. I've done a lot of flags, uh, doormats, things with double presses. I've not ever had really any issues with taking away colors. As you can see, none of that's been taken away. And this was, I pressed here, I pressed this side, and then I did a middle press. And, you know, as you could see, I've not, it didn't take away any color. Okay? Company name, would you be a, would be cute for crew to wear at a craft fair with the company? Absolutely. These are so cute. And if you do go to, like, craft fairs and stuff like that, and you see people barbecuing or people that do that, uh, you know, market these to them. This would be great for that. Um, this would be great for, you know, even just at a craft fair and it'd have your company logo on it. And, uh, you know, you could use this just there. Okay. So the, the bottle opener comes packaged. You're going to get that it's going to come in the little package. And then it comes like this and this is sticky. So when we're done, we just peel this off. And we're going to put this in. So it just comes with this little plate and that's all we're going to be pressing with this plate. Okay, I'm being fearless and yeah, I, you know, I just say, well, if it can go wrong, I'm sure it's going to go wrong for me. Usually it's funny because I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and press this. I've not pressed these before. I'm probably going to have some issues with ghosting, but I wanted to show you all that, um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, and I still have issues with a lot of things. Usually, I try to work out a lot of the issues before I come on and show you how to do it. But I wanted to show you, I'm just like everybody else. I go through material like crazy here, just trying to get things, um, you know, right for you guys. And there you go. So, I pressed these. I've never pressed them before. I had a little bit of ghosting. But, um, you know, nothing that can be taken care of. So, here is the metal plate. Now, I see my phone saying hello. And then I just went and printed out a bunch of, it's just going to say Happy Father's Day. And that's what I'm using. All right. So I'm going to press that. These metal bottle openers, I am actually doing something for the guys at our church. And I'm going to share that with you this coming week. Okay. So I'm probably going to come back here on Monday and, um, I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the bottle openers. These are actually going to my guys at church as well. So I'm just going to tape this down with heat tape. And I think these are only 45 seconds. And these are going to be hot when they come off. Pressing pillow. 45 seconds. I'll just wait for that. I am selling the blank aprons. They're going to be in my shop. I'm going to put them over my Etsy shop. Yes. So, um, and I know for sure if you have your Cricut Easy Press out and you're going to do the aprons with it, um, you can also do these. The Cricut Easy Press really works really nicely with metal items as well. Um, because the metal holds a lot of heat, and then you just put that easy press on it, and it works really well. So grab your easy press and press the bottle openers as well. I love my Cricut Easy Press. I use it a lot. Um, I use it for all my baby blankets. Um, geez, my baby blankets. I sell a lot of baby blankets, and I, I'm always got my easy press ready for it. But you could use it for the apron. I think this would be great for the apron. No, this is going to be hot. Hot, hot, hot. Well, it probably would have helped if I would have peeled off the cover. See, you guys? You're not the only ones that mess up. There's a film on this, and I didn't peel it. And I see that now. Let me show you, though. If you get something and you realize... 
oh my, like what a mess. And then you realize there's a film on that that I did not peel. And I didn't realize that because I didn't read it. A lot of times, even though it's like this when you get it, okay, peel away your film. And guess what's underneath? Your pressed image. Let me show you. See if that catches up. And it presses. It's usually still good underneath. It still presses well. So let's do another one. This time I will peel it. It helps when you read instructions. And when you're pressing these, if you plan on pressing a lot at one time, you could just print out the whole sheet and press it on there. Like tape them all down and press them all at one time. That's what I would do and that's what I am going to do with the guys um, because I have, I need to do 20 of them, uh, actually 22 of them from, from, from my church. So I'm going to press like a whole sheet at a time. No point in pressing one at a time. So let's do one. The bottle openers, um, I don't know the price is. They were, they were either, I think they were either five or six dollars. Thinking five. Okay, so on the bottle openers, there is a that I needed to peel off. That if I'd have probably read the instructions on them, they would probably would have told me that. And it's funny because I usually check. I will usually scratch the surface of things and just lightly with my nail to find out if there's a um, a coating on it, and I didn't. So I've not pressed these either. I just got these in actually. I think Saturday they came. All right, so let's move to a different spot here. All right, so let's try this. This probably should be better. So if you do them and you're doing many at a time, um, you know, just make a cut a do a whole sheet, and then you can just tape them all on there and do. I think there's 20 on here, or 16. Do the whole thing at one time. Yeah, don't don't fear though, because if you do, I mean, you don't get the best press, but you, it still will be, you know, it'll still be there. I don't know why my camera. I can't even really see here. Sorry. Still works. So just peel that off. All right, let me get my gloves because these are going to be hot, so make sure you wear gloves with these. And let me tell you, I have days where literally everything I'm pressing is a nightmare. And it doesn't work out. And I, I will stop sometimes. I'll be on days I'm like, nope, nothing's working. I'm done. Okay, so now this one turned out much nicer because I didn't have the plastic on top interfering. Can you see that? Look how pretty. Try to do this. Maybe let me do this. Sometimes I get a glare. There you go. And it just says Happy Father's Day 2020. So these are going to go to the guys at, um, at our church. So let me put them on the bottle cap or the bottle opener. Okay, and like I said, this is just has a peel away. And this is just, um, and these are usually really good adhesive that's under these kind of items. And I'm sure probably the way, you know, if your guy's left-handed, if your guy's right-handed, my husband's right-handed, I'm going to put it on as if it would show him if he's holding it in his right hand. All you're going to do is pop that down on there. And there you go. Look how pretty. Okay. And like I said, it's magnetic. So it's perfect. It's going to hold. I, I put one on my fridge just to see, and the it's got the really good magnets on the back. So this one's going to hold nicely wherever your guys are. This is not the best. 
but it holds nicely. And I like this one better than a regular one because my husband, at least he'll be able to put it on something and find it. Even if it's just the side of the grill, it, he could put it over there. Yeah, so there you go. So I'm going to put, I'm going to list the apron and I'm going to list the bottle openers um, later today in my shop. Um, I have a hundred right now, I think, of these on hand. I do have a hundred of these on hand. And of the aprons, I know they're coming and I also know I have more of these coming. Um, I wanted to say of the aprons, I also had, I think, a hundred. So I probably have about 98 now because I just used two. Okay, so I'll go ahead and list those, and if you're interested in them, you can go ahead and just go ahead and get those. All right, I know dads are really hard to buy for, so I've been looking for some things. Um, this bottle opener, I'm going to show you, I'm doing something for my guys at church. For I have a 22 um, that I'm going to have put out. Um, you know, the Mother's Day gift went really well. We have a lot of more mothers in the church um, then we have, you know, women in the church and we have guys. I think that's a usual common thing. But um, I'm going to be doing something for Father's Day for the guys for a church. So I'm going to probably do that Monday or Tuesday with you guys. And this is one of the gifts that's going to go in that item. Um, so you might want to, you know, make sure you check that one out as well. So that will be coming up. Okay. All right, does anybody have any questions? And here we go, once again, look how cute. I know we're saying cute, the guys would want it to be manly. And like I said, this right here, um, I'm gonna get off, when I get off of here, I'm gonna put this design in my, um, in my shop. I'll list that for you. And this is gonna be blank, so you could put a name there, that could be customized for anything you want. All right, so if it wants to say Pap Pap, if you want to say dad, grandpa, anything like that, or a guy's name, you could always do that too. Actually, I think I'm going to make one that's going to say mom. <laughs> I would need to change it though because I am not the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, so there you have it. I'm having a hard time seeing comments, just so you know. Um, I keep glitching here. My video has been horrible from the time I started. So hopefully it posts okay. And then you can, um, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can ask me. Just message me or you can message me in my Etsy shop. Um, I tend to, uh, sometimes I get more, better messages in my Etsy shop because I see it. Um, unless you alert me, my messenger on Facebook will go to another, you know, another messenger box and then I don't see it. Unless I go in and specifically scroll down through and I'll be like, oh, I missed a bunch of messages people were trying to message me from. Well, I have a template for the, yes, I have a template for the opener. At what price can I sell those products? So I searched Etsy last night and I was seeing um, a lot of the aprons. Um, the aprons were selling at 20 to 25. I would probably list this as at like maybe $20. Between 20 and 25, that was roughly about the pricing. I did see some go all the way up to, I think the one I did see, and um, now this one, and it just had just a, a, a name here, and I think it just said the Grill Master or something like that on it. And they were offering theirs for 30 some dollars. So um, depending, you know, your price point, if you're selling local and stuff like that, that always take that into consideration, your area. But I probably would say between 20 and 25 for the apron. And these I would definitely sell for at least 10. So probably $9.99, $10. Um, you know, it just depends. So that's that's probably what I'm gonna list these as. Um, these are new. And when you're checking prices, when you know, a lot of times I get a I get a lot of questions. People will message me and ask me, what do you think they should sell this product at? And my biggest piece of advice is, um, you know, you need to determine what your time is worth. You need to determine the cost of the product. 
and then how long did it take you to make that and then how much time so now how much do you want paid to make that and then you need to do a search I search a lot of products before I sell them um, before I even go in and offer them and then I will say is that worth do I think that I can make money a profit out of that um, because a lot of times I will see things and people you know we get a lot of things from China and they're making things in mass productions that I can't produce like they can as quickly as they can and you know like I've been to a lot of craft shows I've done craft shows for years and years and I would go in and now handmade to me I will pay for a pro something to be handmade um, I know the time that it took for that and a lot of times I know that it's a better quality um, so I'm one of those ones but then when I was doing craft shows years ago everything used to be handmade you had to be juried um, you know you had to send in samples of items and there's still a few around my area that do that but mostly not um, but back in the day we had to have juried items we'd have to send a sample of our product in it had to be at least I think it was like 80 to 85 percent handmade um, handmade material things like that um, and then all of a sudden it started changing they started letting vendors in and now these vendors started coming in and they were coming from companies that were making the same items basically it would be something like this they were making the same item they were printing it in mass quantities and they were doing it for half the cost and it was hard for me to keep up with um, honestly and, and I got out of the industry because of of that so um, so now what I do is, and I, I haven't done craft shows for a while, and I'm going to get back into doing some of them. Um, but th the thing about craft shows is there's a lot of vendors in my area, so they do a lot of vendors. Um, but what I started doing is when I'm pricing things now, I will go and I will check Amazon prices. I will do a Google search on prices, and it'll give me companies such as like... Um, like Wayfair, uh, Pier 1, which I heard Pier 1's closing some air stores, if not closing them all. Um, some It'll give me, like, when I Google search, I will get searches of people, companies that might offer printing items like this. And then I'll do Pinterest, and then I'll do Etsy. I'll take all of those combined, and then I'll look, and I'll get a price point and get an average price on what are people offering these for. And that's how I do um, some of my product pricing, okay? Because I don't want to be too low and then not make any profit. I don't want to be too high and not sell anything. So I usually go on an average, what is the price point of selling things, okay? And that's how I come up with a lot of pricing. And then, of course, you know, you got to check your time, how long it takes you, how much you bought it for, and is it worth it then? So that's what you need to take into account when you do things, okay, when you're pricing out your products. <clears throat> so I'm going to say between 8 and 10 for these, these you're going to be able to whip out super quickly. So just remember that. Um, you're going to be able to do, I did 16 to a page, an 8 by 11 regular sheet, 16 of them. You're going to be able to do 16 of these, one press, boom, you're done. So these are going to be super easy. Um, these are going to take a little bit more time, but they should be able to press very quickly, especially if you're only going to do this and you don't add the flames. This is going to be quickly too, just to press. Okay. All right. So is that any other questions? And I will put a template up in my Etsy shop. For these actually I'll just go ahead and put the template up on the page as well I'll put it in the files all right and someone asked me I don't want to forget this or I will um, they wanted to find out they wanted me to talk about what um, what printer and, and programs that I use um, I can't remember who it was and I wanted to write it down sorry as you see I use the Epson this is the Epson workforce 20 uh, 7720 
Okay, it has the two trays. I like the two trays because the bottom one, I just used my 8x11 paper, and this is the one up here on the second tray is where I switch between my 11x17 11, 11 and my 13x19 papers. And the back, there is a back feed on here that does a 13x21 paper as well. If you like a bigger paper for your doormats, um, you can print through the back. Um, so I use the uh, CISS system, which is a continue ink supply system, and it hangs on the outside. I use ink products, um, inks, sublimation inks, okay? And then I just refill out here. I don't refill the cartridges inside. There's a cartridge system in there. I don't refill in there. I refill out here, okay? And um, I print from Photoshop. Somebody said, well, how does my colors, why they're so vibrant in that? Um, I print from Photoshop. And a lot of the time, people always think it's, you know, it's all about your inks and stuff like that. I do use a good quality ink, don't get me wrong. Um, but I will tell you, most people's problems with their colors not being right, not being vibrant, not being things like that, is you have to have your color profiles. They have to be correct with your inks. Um, if your color profile is off, your reds might be reddish orange. Your teals might not be a teal. Your grays won't be a gray. Um, you're not getting your true colors. So you need to check with your ink manufacturer if they require a color profile because that is the most important thing with getting your colors correct. Okay, and a lot of you don't know that. You throw your inks in and then you're just printing away and your colors aren't really where they need to be. And that most of the time is the problem, okay? So make sure you check with your ink manufacturer if they have a color profile. Um, I know even the sawgrass in that will make, I don't do sawgrass, I don't know nothing about it, but I see a lot of people um, posting, you know, that their uh, color profiles have to be correct with what they're doing. So, and I know the Epson inks are the same way with color, um, with your ink manufacturer. They require you to have a certain profile for the ink that you're using. And you need to make sure that you have that if you want your colors to be correct. Is there a good Photoshop video out there? I've never used Photoshop. Well, let me tell you, Photoshop has been the thorn in my side. Um, I'm not great with it. I can get by with it, and that's what I do. Um, I get a lot. I, I used to, um, I'm used to working with other design programs. Photoshop is something that my daughter, she, she's a graphic designer. I get a lot of tips and tricks, and um, when I get stuck, I use her. Um, but I have used some videos out there. There's a ton of Photoshop videos out there, and I guess trying to just weed through them for what you're looking for is maybe what you need. I'm not the best with Photoshop. Um, I get by with it. I print from it. Um, I do, you know, I, my designs in it and stuff like that, but I am not an expert with it at all. So asking me, I get a lot of questions, how do you do this, how do you, I can't help you through that, I'm sorry. Um, when it comes to designing and, and computer work and print work and stuff like that, that is just over the top for me. It's, it, it's hard for me to explain how to get through it. I can get you through some small things, but, and I really don't know um, who, you know, like what specific person to use to use their Photoshop videos. I think you just, whatever your need is, you're going to have to maybe search in YouTube and then try and find if you can, you know, get your need to fit that because Photoshop is still a thorn in my side. So do I have to do a call? Yes. Yes. Um, I think most manufacturers, ink manufacturers do require that. So I've made sure that I've set my computers up for that. Yes. Yeah, so I do use color profiles because I, I need my colors to be true.
and you need to, whatever um, ink manufacturer you're using, you need to check with them. And then uh, whatever, whatever program you're printing from is the program that you need to match your color profiles. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to leave that here. Again, this is what we did today. We did the aprons. There we go. Apron for dad and the bottle openers. Okay. There you go. All right, if anybody has any questions, anything like that, you can always message me in my um, on Facebook. And if I don't get back to you within an hour or two, please message me over on my Etsy page because then um, I just must not have seen it. All right, everybody have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend and be blessed.